containerization is um, is the next lesson. I mean, you can see the table of contents here on the left side. Um, the tutorial, by the way, is not finished yet. So, uh, for example, the last chapter here is uh, called jobs, but I'm already working on a stateful set chapter. And I'm also not sure how long it will take to go through these chapters. And if I find out that, um, that we are too fast in processing uh, the content, I'll, I will add more content. So the tutorial will be updated regularly, um, append only, at least that's the plan. So if you, if you walk top down, um, you should be fine, even if I keep uh, adding content at uh, the tail. So as I said, the scope of this part is uh, to, to cover what is a container, what is a container image, also obviously how to start a container, um, how to build a container image will be very important for the final exam. We also need to understand what a container registry is uh, and how to publish images to the registry. Um, briefly, we'll discover what a volume is, a container volume. Um, and then we go to the Docker part where we actually do some, you know, concrete stuff with it. So what are the skills? We already covered that. Um, before we dive into, into containerization, I'd like to check on the preliminaries. Um, so the, the, the things that you may know or may not know. So I will ask questions. So direct question. Um, do you know what a virtual machine is? Uh, have you ever done something with a virtual machine so far? Yes. Uh, what did you do with virtual machines? Mm, different stuff. Uh, I used them in, uh, in private uh, stuff to, to try out different operating systems or um, uh, I used them in the managed services department to, to build customer systems. Yeah. Um, what hypervisor did you use? I like used uh, Microsoft Hyper-V. Um, VMware, uh, ESXi, and um, Xen. All right. So how would you describe the user experience of uh, creating a virtual machine? Uh, for example, um, what are the, the inputs? What, what, is, what do you need to start a virtual machine? And how long does it take? And what's the quality of the resulting virtual machine, for example, compared to a physical machine? Um, the, the user experience, uh, it's it differs a bit, um, but uh, the creation, yeah, it, uh, it might take some time to create, like, I don't know, minutes to like half an hour, depends on the, on the underlying system, on the, on the uh, host actually. Mm -hmm. um, one problem you, you actually have is uh, it Creates some some overhead um, as your base operating system of the of the virtual machine. It um, might involve many parts, many software packages you don't need actually. Um, and uh, often it's not as performance um, the, the performance is not as good as you might expect. Yes. So um, if you're using uh, VMware, for example, then. I'm not really sure whether VMware is para virtualized or fully virtualized, but the the virtualization um, basically means that a few of the hardware components are virtualized. Could be, for example, a hard disk drive um, and uh, co according a hard disk controller. Uh, the 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 graphics unit uh, could be could be virtualized, and the network interface could be virtualized, and that creates overhead. Another thing that creates overhead is that you're basically starting an operating system within an operating system, including the entire kernel of the operating system. Uh, so you have a memory overhead of uh, hundreds of megabytes. Uh, another ingredient that you'll need if you want to bootstrap a virtual machine is a virtual machine image. So you'll have a image that is uh, hypervisor specific in, in most of the cases. So for example, uh, VMware has its, has its own virtual machine image. Uh, if, you, if you're using Amazon uh, EC2, you'll have an AMI image. Uh, if you use an OpenStack image, you'll have different uh, container images. You could use an AMI, but I think OpenStack uh, also supports different other formats depending on which hypervisor you use. So the user experience with the virtual machine is usually, yes, it adds overhead, which means 
you, it consumes memory. Uh, it it consumes storage because you have to store all that somewhere too. So you'll have a some kind of disk attached to the virtual machine. Uh, and you because you have another operating system that creates a lot of overhead. And um, and you know there's performance uh, overhead basically to everything like like the CPU, like network, uh, disk controller. So you have reduced performance. However, depending on um, on the way the virtualization works, you'll have a pretty good isolation. That means that if you do not overcommit your hardware, uh, two virtual machines collocated on the same physical machine, they won't see each other in terms of uh, degrading performance. Usually that problem is referred to as the na noisy neighborhood problem. So if one virtual machine has a database and that's highly utilized, for example, performing a lot of, of disk IO operations, then the other virtual machine should be compromised in its performance. And without overcommitment on a, on a, you know, with a good hypervisor, you can do that pretty well. It's not, I, not perfect, but you can do that pretty well. Um, starting virtual machine takes minutes at least. It could be could be ten minutes, could be fifteen minutes. Also, the question is where does the container image come from? Do you have to download that? Do you count that to the start time? But that's about the that's about the user experience you'll have. I have another question. Um, so you create a virtual machine, uh, you boot a operating system, um, you start a database, and you write data to the database. And then you turn off the virtual machine and you turn it back on. Does it still have your data? It depends, I guess. This, um, I can turn it off and like turn it on in the pristine state again. Uh, or I can turn it off where it saves its state. And when I turn it back on, it uh, has all the data still available. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I get your point. Let's, let's split that question into two parts. Um, does it store uh, operations performed to the disk? So let's say you've written a database record uh, into your database and flushed all the buffers. It's out of the memory. It's on the disk. You shut down the virtual machine. You restart the virtual machine. Is your data, data still there? Uh, yeah, it should be. Yes. And I, I think the, the uh, option you mentioned is, is that some hypervisors can also freeze the memory uh, store that memory and then when you boot the virtual machine again, it will basically continue as if you just suspended the virtual machine, right? Yes. All right. Yeah, I was not referring to that. I was referring to uh, having a persistent volume uh, as part of the virtual machine um, and that if you write something to that disk, it will be still there if you restart the virtual machine because this is very very intuitive and people will assume that this is uh, always the case i'm trying to uh, provide links wherever i use you know the sources so that you can dig deeper if you want to and that you that's all or also that's clear what is it that i'm referring to specifically